another letters and numbers auction where acres of prime puzzle land are just waiting to be snapped up and subdivided into words and sums. I'm the man with the gavel and bidding alongside you tonight, someone who knows the value of everything, it's Lily Senna. Hi Richard. And the dictionary developer, David Astle. <laughs> To our contestants now for tonight, and firstly, our carryover champion, back for her fourth night, Tina Rose. Hello, Tina. Hi, Richard. How are you? Now, you actually came out to Australia as a child from Denmark, is that right? And, and you had something of a struggle with the language? Well, I found that um, we came out on a boat and we were taught English on the boat, but I found when I got to school here, and I was 11, um, I was given a lot of shtick for my accent, so I being the obstinate child that I was, um, determined that I would learn the language, I would get rid of my accent, and I would learn to spell. Well, there's certainly no trace of an accent now. No. In fact, when I do visit Denmark, people laugh at me because I speak Danish with an Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> we promise not to laugh at you tonight. Welcome yeah. back. And tonight's challenger is freight and logistics consultant, Tim Hoffman. Hello, Tim. Hello, Richard. Now, there is a connection by complete coincidence between you and David, I understand. What is it? Well, many years ago, uh, we were all uh, living in Sydney. David was flatmates with uh, some friends of mine. And so I got to know him briefly. And uh, I can confess that I've um, sampled his, uh, his um, cooking. <laughs> can you remember what he cooked? Well, I, I don't know what it was called. <laughs> that is the closest thing to a non-compliment I think I've I, come across in a while. I would describe it as a type of proto putinesca. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen a caper, and but I was impressed uh, in that there was a garnish, a very, very well uh, positioned piece of parsley, I think. You know I'm in charge of scoring and adjudication, don't you, Tim? <laughs> I think, David, later we're going to have to get the recipe for whatever it was. Anyway, welcome, Tim. Thank you. So please make them feel very much at home. Tina Rose and Tim Hoffman. And first on the auction block is the letters game. Tina, off you go, please. May I start with a consonant, please? You may. N. And a second. D. And a third. G. And a fourth. P. A vowel, please. U. And a second one. E. And a third vowel. A. And a consonant. R. And I'll finish with a vowel, thank you. And lastly, I. Thanks, Lily. First clock. Letters for the night, Tina. How many? Seven, Richard. And Tim? Seven as well. Let's begin with yours. Uh, draping. And yours, Tina? Grading. Grading. Well, both of them use the ING, David, but mm. you've got your severe look on. Yes, I do, because uh, could you just spell that, uh, please, Tina? G-R-A-D-I-N-G. Unfortunately, it's a duplication of that G. There's only one G in that mix, so grading I cannot uh, no. allow. Draping is perfectly fine, Tim. And uh, in that same household, we had a very severe... Uh, chore roster, I remember. Laundry was on that uh, chore list and sometimes an odd sock would be an unpaired sock. That's an eight. U-N-P-A-I-R-E-D. Lovely to hear that domestic detail. Thank you, David. <laughs> but well done to Tim. Seven points. More letters and Tim, your first selection. Could I have a consonant, please? Certainly. Let's start with T. And a vowel. A. Uh, consonant, thanks. S. Another vowel. O. And a consonant. C. And another consonant. F. A vowel. I. A consonant, please. R. And another vowel. And last letter, E. I'll start the clock.
first selection, Tim. How many? Seven, Richard. Sounds good. Tina? Seven also. Let's begin there. Coaster. And yours, Tim? Coaster. <laughs> Let's verify that uh, you've both got the same coasters. David? Well, both are coasting along beautifully. Good sevens, both players. And uh, I've done it again, Richard. A full Monty. A full Monty. <laughs> Oh, look, we're very pleased to hear that. And you're suppressing that smile just a little bit. There we are. That's better. I was, was so it? grateful for Tim asking for a vowel that last letter. Along came the E. And there's actually two uh, factories and factorise, both there. Fantastic work. Two for Monty, David. Well done. But uh, good stuff from Tina and Tim. Seven points each. Well, after full Monty glory, we bounce on to the numbers game. Tina, you've been doing brilliantly well with the maths over the last few nights. What would you like? I'd like the family mix, thank you, Lily. Thanks, Tina. That's too large and four small. And starting with the smalls, two, four, ten, six, and the two large, fifty and seventy-five. The target to reach is two hundred and forty-one. Thanks, Lily. We'll chase it. Time, Turner. One off at 240. What about you, Tim? The same for me, Richard. 240 for you as well. Okay, Tina, take us there, please. Um, 50 plus 75 is 125. 50 plus 75 is 125. Multiplied by 2. By is the 2 is 250. 50 minus 10. Minus 10 is 240. 240. So, very nice indeed. Straight to 240, just one off. Tim, same method? No, a little different. Uh, okay. 2 times 75, Lily, is 150. Two, 2 times 75 is 150. Plus 50 is 200. Plus 50 is 200. And then separately, 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 10 is 40, and that on is 240. So, two great approaches to get to uh, 240. How close did you get? Now, 50 minus 10, which is 40... 40 times 4 is 160. Now, 160 plus 75 is 235. And then add the 6, which is 241. Oh, beautiful work. Well done, Lily. But good stuff from Tina and Tim. They both scored 7 points each. So Tina's on 14, Tim is on 21 as we head to our first break. Your first word mix, vice call, and the clue, a bony collar. We'll be right back. Yeah. 